not even really a drive, because I'm not sure where the drive and hard drive comes from. It's got a motor. It's got a motor. But, 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 but like they were floppy disks and hard drives. But drive isn't the opposite of disk. Like I got to assume the drive is because there's a motor in there and it spins it a lot. Okay, right. And you can also talk about floppy drives. discussion earlier uh, about Tinder, because uh, my friend John, my friend John's in the market again, people. Uh, if you're looking for a less wealthy, uh, less socially connected uh, Anderson Cooper type uh, with, let's just say he has an, an unusual dress style on Mondays, uh, so hopefully you like Paisley. Uh, if you like Anderson Cooper types and Paisley, I have the person for you. Uh, and if you are a single lady type, uh, he is, you are possibly his type. Uh, so post below in the comments section and I will connect the two of you up. Uh, and then I'm not going to do that. The last time I did that, it did not work out. I'm sorry, people. Um, anyway, uh, it is December of 2017. It's the last show, 2017. Uh, last year, I think I opened the show with, this is the last Keith Explains of 2016, right? Because I was hoping that, like, the studio audience would do the huge, <gasps> you know, I just announced that we were being canceled or, you know, that I was getting a job on the big network or something. Uh, no one cared. No one cared. No one has ever mentioned to me that I, I played with their emotions for a few seconds by implying that this TV show, which nobody watches, uh, was ending. Uh, eventually, this TV show will end. I do not expect uh, a write-up in the New York Times, you know, talking about the many good seasons and the highlights and stuff. Uh, it's December. Uh, that means a couple things. First of all, uh, I and everyone else is crazy busy with holiday stuff. Um, uh, and secondly, we just finished November. Uh, November, for me, was also kind of busy. I had this conference I had to go to in the first weekend, which you can't talk about because it's a conference you can go to, but you aren't supposed to talk about. Um, and then we had, I mean, we had Thanksgiving and we had before Thanksgiving, you get the whole week of Thanksgiving off. So like the two weeks before you're busy working to make sure you had, can go on vacation. So it's not as great as it could be having a week off, but it's still nice. Uh, and in my case, uh, I mean, I start a lot of vacations by writing a list of things I can do on vacation. And I, as you know, I write lists like this. Uh, I take a piece of paper, uh, I fold a piece of paper in half, and then I turn it sideways, and then I write a list. Uh, and then that means that I have, you know, from a piece of paper, which, you know, I use a quarter of my pieces of paper, I guess is what I'm saying. I must hate trees. Uh, but it's just what I do. Uh, and then I write the list, and then, like, I have a clipboard that I keep around the house, and I would, like, check stuff off, and I write stuff in the bottom, and... Usually by the third day of a vacation, I lose the clipboard. I'm like, what am I going to do? Uh, so I started, I started putting the list in my little phone, my little phone app of list things. And so we got, oh, look, there's a new Pokemon. It's green. I think that means there's a Pokemon I haven't gotten before. No, no, that's yellow. No, green is, I'm going to push it. Watch. And now it's going to buzz. It's going to buzz again. Um, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that. I took it off because I didn't want it buzzing and flashing under my shirt and have everyone wonder, what the heck is going on? Uh, does Keith have one of them nuclear reactors in his chest so he can fly around? No, it's nowhere near that cool. Um, come, back, come back to Thanksgiving. Um, usually near the start of uh, any long break, uh, I have to construct this list of things to do or more realistically to not get done and feel bad about uh, by the end of break. Uh, and in this case, uh, I went to my little my little app where I keep track of shit, and I was like, I'm, it's time to make my list again. Uh, and then I found the list I made last Christmas, you know, 11 months ago, and most of it still wasn't done. So again, I felt bad 
Like, look at all this stuff I was going to do. It's been 11 months. I haven't gotten most of it done because it takes time and stuff happens. So I guess I should make a new list or I could just change the title of this list to Thanksgiving 2017 and then I could type a couple things in the bottom of it and then I'd have a, so that's what I did. I took my long list of the things I hadn't done, which apparently I can't do, and I renamed it to my current list and I added some stuff to it and then I got all that stuff done over Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, I lied to you. I lied to you people. Uh, again, I, I got very little uh, on that list done. I got a couple things done. Like I had, um, we, we live in a two-story house and there's a light in the stairway between the upstairs and the downstairs. Uh, and like 15, like 10 or 15 years ago, uh, it occurred to me, I'm a computer scientist-y person, I should automate all the lights in my house so that wherever I am, I can just typey typey and like the whole house will go dark because that's something that I like to do. And then I paid a bunch of money and I bought all these programmable switches and I put all the switches in and I never got the damn thing working. Uh, but apparently the switches go bad after like five or 10 years. So slowly switches in my house have stopped working. It's the most frustrating thing. Like you, you just get used to walking into a room and hitting the switch and the light comes on. And then someday I'd like walk into the computer room and hit the switch and the light wouldn't come on. And I'd be like, I'd have to hold the switch down. And then after like three or four seconds it would come on. And then I'd be angry every time I went into that room because I couldn't turn the light on or I couldn't turn it off. And then eventually I'd buy a new light switch and I'd install the new light switch and then I could turn the light on. So like there were rooms that just habitually I would not go to because it was hard to turn the light on and it made me angry. And eventually uh, the light switch at the top of the stairs was one of these switches that stopped working. So it suddenly became very hard to turn that light on or off uh, and then it became impossible and then that light switch started making a horrible whining noise uh, making me think that my entire house was going to burn down any minute. So I, I turned the power off, took that switch out, and then for like a month, I had just connected the two wires together. We could not turn the light off because there was, there was no longer any switch there. The light was just on all the time. Uh, and I felt kind of bad, but like I justified it by saying, well, at least it's an LED bulb. It's like a dollar's worth of electricity a year. So my... This is dumb, but I'm not wasting a huge amount of electricity. But it's, it's very annoying every time you go to bed to think, I got to go turn the hallway light off and then realize you can't turn the hallway light off. So, so eventually I bought a new switch uh, and I went to install, and I was going to install the new switch. Uh, and then, it, then, then I, that's when I discovered, I mean, I didn't discover, I knew this. Uh, it's a two-way switch. There's a switch at the top of the stairwell and a switch at the bottom of the stairwell. Uh, Three-way switches are electrician's magic. Like no one, no one really knows how a three-way switch works off, off the top of their head, right? They always have to think about it for a minute. And then they figure out, oh yeah, we've just flipped the two and there's a carrier and blah, blah, blah. So I, I had to replace my switch with a new switch. So I, I'm not bright. So I'm buying a new brand of programmable switches. So I bought one of those. And then I had to figure out where, where the wires were going here. Like, did the power come in from the bottom and then go up and then the light switch? Or did it go through the light switch? And then the, I, it took me like four and a half, five hours uh, to replace this damn switch uh, and get the light working again uh, over a couple days. Uh, and midway through that, Loretta was like, you have to call an electrician because you were just too, you were too angry in your house uh, to, to make progress here. And I was like, it used to work. Like there are wires in the wall. I just need to understand where the wires go. Uh, and eventually I figured it out. Eventually I did figure out where the wires go. I got the switch installed uh, and I went to install the downstairs switch. Uh, and then I realized that this, this light switch I had bought had the wrong, like I needed a special switch for a three-way circuit, not like a normal switch, like a special switch, which I didn't have. So I was like, arr! Uh, and then I ordered the special switch on Amazon and then it showed up two days later uh, and then I lost it. Uh, so for like a month, uh, we were back to the situation where uh, we couldn't turn the light off or on from downstairs. We only turned on from upstairs. So again, even though I've installed a light switch, 
we've gotten in the habit of leaving that light on because if you're downstairs, you have to walk upstairs through the dark hallway, get to the switch, turn it on, so you can walk downstairs, so then you can walk upstairs and light. It's crazy. Uh, I did fix it, people. I got the right switch. I ordered another one. Somewhere in my house, there's the wrong switch. And when I find it, I'm going to do the other two-way switch in my house. Now I've got it. The crazy thing is, none of this is on the list of stuff I was going to talk about, um, uh, of stuff I got done over Thanksgiving. Like, uh, again, on my long list of things over Thanksgiving to get done, uh, I, again, accomplished very little of it. Uh, one of the things was do some cleaning up in the computer room. Uh, and by cleaning up, I mean I have a desk with a computer uh, where I edit this TV show, and I like typing, typing my little financy stuff. Uh, and occasionally I play a couple little, little games on Steam and some email and whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and over time, just a pile of paper accumulates of things I've gotten in the mail or that I have to save or whatever. And then every once in a while I get the time and I go in there and I just start dropping those pieces of paper in the scanner and then I typey typey them into the bank app. Uh, I don't know why, but I do. Um, and then after the piece of paper come out of the scanner, I put them in a little thing and then we shred all of that. Uh, and now I like have like five boxes of stuff in my house to shred because I just powered through. I was just, I was everything I was scanning and, and dropping, typey typeying. And like I found like at the bottom of the last pile was from like a year ago. So like that pile has been there for a year waiting for me to get to it. Uh, I got that done. Um, uh, eight years ago when I bought the laser printer to go in there, I had temporarily stuck it on the end of a, a table because uh, I wanted it at a different place, but there was stuff there. And I spent like a, a three quarters of a day cleaning that whole thing out so I could move the laser printer down. Uh, and now I got the laser printer where I wanted it to be when I started. Uh, funny additional story, after I moved the laser printer, it doesn't work anymore. And I don't know why, I can't figure it out. Um, again, that makes me angry. So I'm, I'm trying not to think about that. Uh, on the plus side, I got the laser printer moved. On the downside, it's no longer a printer. So now I've got a thing down there that's useless to me and a house with no printer. <sighs> what else do we do over Thanksgiving? Oh, uh, every year uh, uh, when my sister-in-law, Maureen, used to live out here, she convinced me to do this thing called the turkey trot, which is on Thanksgiving Day, you get up on Godly early and you go to downtown San Jose and you're on a five or 10K race uh, and then you go home and after you've gone home, you feel less bad eating a lot of turkey and pie because you got a little exercise in the morning. Uh, and it raises money for charity. It's a nice thing. Uh, and then Maureen abandoned me uh, by moving to another state. Uh, and for some reason, I still get up on God early and go to downtown San Jose and run the frickin' turkey trot race and then go home. Uh, and this year, we decided not to have any actual Thanksgiving food because we were lazy. We didn't want to cook food. So we just, I don't remember what we had. Maybe it was sandwiches. It was something. <sighs> turkey trot, turkey trot. Uh, so I went down. Again, I ran the turkey trot. Um, two, two vaguely funny things this year, uh, for me at least. Uh, it turns out I bought two tickets for the turkey trot. I don't quite know how. Uh, I bought one for the 5K race and one for the 10K race. And then I picked up the, the little thing you wear with your number on it for the 5K race, and then I ran the 10K race. So my time is ungodly bad. They're like, you were, you were among the worst people in your age bracket running 5K. I'm like, well, technically I ran 10K. So I wasn't that bad, but I was still pretty bad, I'm pretty sure, because uh, a lot of people pass me and I don't. That was that. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, I've come to the realization uh, over Thanksgiving and before that and after that, that uh, the stuff in my house is just getting a little bit worse every year. Um, the latest example is we, like a couple years ago, the, the door in my oven just started to crack, like the glass, this crack just started to slowly go across it. And I was like, well, what do I care if there's a crack in the glass? It still works as an oven. Um, and now apparently we have a couple cracks in the glass and now we've discovered that there are two panes of glass, an outer one and an inner one, 
and that inner one just has a huge chunk of glass that's fallen out of it. So my, my, my stove is, is rapidly on the decline. Uh, now the downside is that means I have to buy a new stove. I don't want to have to buy a new stove. Last time I bought a stove, it was a pain in the ass. Took a long time. Current comparing features. I tried to install it myself. Never install your own stove, people. Uh, it's just a lot of fidgety, reaching behind, twisting things to try to get. My stove is still not level after all these years. Uh, it's a very, like when you go to make eggs, the, the oil all runs to the bottom, to the, get your stove level. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna buy a new stove. I'm gonna pay some guy to install my stove. And when he's done installing my stove, I'm gonna put a pot on it. I'm gonna put some oil in it. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't run to the one side of the pot, the other side of the pot. <sighs> I also discovered my dishwasher has, my dishwasher has been going crazy for years. Like this little, this little plastic thing on the top breaks every four or five years. Uh, and it breaks because they use like a really cheap piece of plastic to attach a thing. Uh, and I didn't want to pay for a new dishwasher or pay for a guy. So like the first time it broke, I like went and found the little explodey part view. And then I was like, oh, I need this exact part. And then I paid a paste to mail me that part for like $14. And then I just snapped it in. And then right as rain, four years later, it did it again. And that's when I was like, I'm, here's when the genius that is Keith paid off. Because that first time when I bought one, I bought two. Because I was like, this is going to break again. And it's $14 shipping. And the part is like $8. So like four years ago, I was like, Keith, you're a genius. And I went to the drawer. And I got the second part. And I snapped it in. I was like, woo, victory. Uh, and then like in October, it broke again. And I was like, oh, why didn't I order three? Why didn't I order three when I had the chance? So I had to go buy another one. Uh, this one, I found a guy in town that has one. So I drove there. And I was like, I would like this. I called earlier. And he's like, yeah, I set it aside. We don't get a lot of call for that part. I'm like, well, I would like it. And he's like, OK. I'm like, do you have two? He's like, no, I only have one of these. No one ever gets this. Oh, look, it buzzed again. I'm going to push the button. Um, so I fixed it, and now I have to go order another one for a couple years from now. But I'm, I'm wondering whether that's a good idea, because other stuff in the dishwasher is starting to go. Like the, like the strip around the door that's supposed to ensure steam doesn't get out is just filthy dirty. Like I feel bad putting my dishes in there, because I'm like, you know, I've like scrubbed it off once, and it's, it's okay. And now the, the cover for my little water softener thingy fell off. Um, and it, uh, uh, that's appliances. On the plus side for appliances, um, someone, a friend of mine a couple months ago, or yeah, like a month or two ago, I was talking about what I have for breakfast, uh, which is an English muffin with jelly. Uh, and she's like, there's no protein in that. And I'm like, isn't there protein in English muffin? I was like, well, maybe a little, but not enough. And I was like, oh, what should I eat? And she's like, you should eat hard boiled eggs in the morning because they're they're easy to make and they have a lot of protein and they're kind of filling and I don't know maybe she liked eggs uh, so I was like that sounds like a genius idea I like hard-boiled eggs uh, and then I tried to make some hard-boiled eggs uh, and it's not hard to make hard-boiled eggs but it's hard to peel hard-boiled eggs like I'm like hey it took me eight minutes to make hard-boiled eggs and it takes me eight minutes to peel each egg this is not I don't know how they do it in the factories I mean, maybe people get, maybe it's a skill, but it seems to me there's still a lot of peeling involved, very laborious. So I was never, I was never happy with the hard boiled eggs. Uh, and then I was looking at a web page, as I do all the time, and it was like, you should buy this hard boiled egg thing. And I was like, how did you know, web page, that I'm a guy who is unhappy about hard boiled eggs? And I know the answer to that, which is, in some marketer's dream world, there's a little record for me. And that record has a little checkbox in the will buy random crap if you show it to him. And so every web page I go to just shows me the next random crappy thing. And like I buy a fourth of them. So they've correctly nailed me in terms of I will buy 
thing that I shouldn't. Anyway, I bought this hard-boiled thing for like $14 from Amazon. Like you put the eggs in, you pour some water in, and you poke holes in the eggs so that they don't explode. Uh, originally, I was like, I don't know if you have to poke egg, poke holes in them. I mean, I've made hard-boiled eggs lots of times and never poked holes in them. Uh, and then apparently I didn't poke a hole well enough once, and my egg exploded. So those engineers knew what they were talking about when they put the little egg pokey thingy and wrote it in the instructions. Uh, egg maker. It's worked out great for me. Ah, look, look, I've gotten to this piece of paper which has Pokemon Go on it. Um, Pokemon is a game. Uh, we have this thing for, po it's, it's on your phone. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a game for kids and some adults. A lot of adults actually play the game. I see many more adults playing the game than kids, although I, I'm not sure if that's what the intention was originally. Um, you take your phone, you go places, you, you battle little Pokemons, and you capture them in your ball, and you send a professor, and uh, if you're crazy, you like buy these things for 30 bucks so that they will buzz when there's a Pokemon nearby, and then you push the button, and you catch Pokemon, you don't catch Pokemon. Um, uh, Loretta really rather enjoys the Pokemon game, uh, which again is probably why I play the Pokemon game. Uh, and really, if you're, if, you're, if you're a fella, and you're looking for a lady, uh, you got to do some of the things a lady likes to do, like play Pokemon. That's words to live by, is what I'm saying, people. <sighs> so we played the Pokemon, uh, and they, they changed how the game works. There are these things called raids. Uh, and so on a moment's notice, uh, Loretta will find me in the house and go, there's a raid here, and we've, we've got 30 minutes to get there, and we're going to be able to catch a... And then she will... She will say some words, which are the, the name of some imaginary creature I've never heard of. Um, and I will dutifully say, okay, let's go. We go down, we get in the car, we drive to some random place. And then when we get there, it's full of other nerds like us, just standing around waiting till enough people get there so that together we can battle an imaginary creature and potentially subdue uh, and conquer it. Good times, everyone. Um, ah, there's that. Uh, uh, we don't play Pokemon. We, we play Pokemon because the writer would have played Pokemon regardless. Uh, but before Pokemon, there was a game called Ingress, which we also played, which is very similar. Uh, you go places in the real world, and you tappy-tappy on your phone, and you take over things for your team. It's like, it's like two-team color tag except it's all virtualized in your phone. Uh, and we have been playing Ingress for many years, uh, I think like four or five. <sighs> Ingress is not just a game where you go places and tappy tappy. Occasionally they have these big events where a lot of people get together and they are all tappy tappying at the same place on each of your two teams trying to accomplish something. Uh, and we, we were up in San Francisco over the weekend at the latest, they call them anomalies. Uh, anomaly is a word that means something out of place. Uh, and I got to say, a uh, bunch of people standing around, staring at their phones, running back and forth. Does seem a little out of place, so anomaly makes sense. Um, we were up there uh, on the valiant blue side, trying to keep the world safe from the green side. We were not successful up in San Francisco, as it turns out. Bad news, everyone. <sighs> but we were up there. Um, and it's a big event. Like, there were hundreds and hundreds of people there, and people had coordinated beforehand and made plans and had maps of where things were, and people were divided into teams, and each of the teams had instructions, and it was like, you know, you guys are going to be here, and you're going to try and do this. Uh, and from my perspective, like I was on a team and they were like, okay, well, you got to go to this place and along the way, anything you see that's green, try to take it over and anything that's blue and try to get keys for everything. And then when you get there, they'll tell you what to do. Uh, and midway through the day, I realized this, this is probably a lot like what combat was for people in the military, which is you just get told to go somewhere and do something and you have no idea really why. Like, there, 
there are generals somewhere that have some notion of strategy and whether you're successful or not, I had no idea. I had no idea why I was doing most of the things I was doing. Uh, I stood in a place and hit recharge for like 15 minutes, not knowing why, just like recharge and deploy, recharge and deploy, keep it blue, keep it blue. Uh, and then like after we were done, I was like, well, that was kind of pointless. And they were like, well, it kept them from getting the blank. And I was like, really? It would have been great to know that. And they're like, didn't you see it? And I was like, no, I couldn't see it. <laughs> Ingress. Oh, whoa. And on the plus side, I got a parking ticket in San Francisco uh, for parking on the Embarcadero, uh, like $88. I have to remember to pay it, so someone remind me to pay the ticket. It's in my car. I keep meaning to pay it. Uh, someone remind me. Uh, speaking of the car, uh, my car is now like uh, 17 years old. And I, I keep... Every couple of months, someone says, Keith, you should buy a new car. And then I say, why? And they're like, well, don't you want a new car? And the answer is no, I don't want a new car. I, I, I just want a car. Like if, my, like if nothing went wrong with my car, I would just drive that car forever because it works as a car. I get in, I drive, I get out, I'm done driving. Uh, it is slowly getting less and less good. So like I'm now at the point where I'm like, well, I mean, I could buy a new car. I don't really want to buy a new car. I mean, they're... They're pricey, and I don't, I have this weird thing where I keep thinking the cars are going to someday get a lot better, and today's cars compared to my car are a lot better, but I also keep thinking that, like, well, next year's cars will be even better, uh, and specifically, I keep hoping one of these days cars will actually drive themselves, so I, because I hate driving, especially in traffic. Uh, so specifically, like right now, uh, two things. First of all, like four years ago, I backed into a pillar, and like the front fender on my, on my car is a little dented. So every couple months it gets dented in, and then I take a screwdriver and pry it open so I can open the front door. I hate that. And like I was like, I took it to a place. I was like, can you fix this? And he's like, yeah, but it's probably more than the car's worth. I'm like, yeah, but if you fixed it, then I wouldn't have to keep a large screwdriver in my car and pry it out, and then I can get the car painted, because the paint's going bad, uh, and the leather, but the leather seats are going bad. So now here, here's the thing, you can, you, people, you can let me know. It's like $4,000 to fix everything in my car now, make me happy, or it's like $40,000 to buy a new car. I don't know which of the two to do. I keep waffling. If like a new car, I can, I can get an electric car. I can get a, like now with a, now with a gimpy blue, I'm not buying a Tesla, people. I'm not, I'm not made it. Oh, uh, look, we're, we're practically out of time, everyone, is what I'm talking. It's been lovely uh, spending another time with you. Uh, we may or may not tape in January. I don't know. It depends on how close to New Year's it is. We'll figure that one out. Uh, thanks for watching the show. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. Okay.